So let me just interrupt that answer, Mike, from the sense of if you were Robert Kraft and you Bell had that conversation with Bill, and, and like you said, you owe it to him, and, if you know, again, what he's done, and he says he wants to come back, and the draft comes, and Bill Belichick with that second pick takes an offensive tackle or does something along those lines and then takes a quarterback down in the draft in the first or second round or whatever if they maneuver. Yeah. Yeah. How do you th- – do you if you're the Crafts, do you worry at all about the public perception – of that do you know what i mean like from the sense of okay we just had this most disastrous year you can't and, not take a quarterback you know, yeah, if you have I a mean, number, top two pick. how do you react to you that if you're that. the crafts and if you're you know because you know the fan base is going to be angry if they don't yeah. take a quarterback at number two. Oh man there's so much there right dan i mean i think the first thing is like honestly like if bill is coming back like i i just think the whole tenor and mood has to shift anyway you know like and what does it look personnel wise you know are what changes are they making and so i think all the points you made are really fair it's just so many unknowns right now but i think i do think it would be hard to come back and not have like a a change in the way the coach or the organization is communicating you know with the fans in terms of what the vision is and maybe you know, so I, 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 I'm with you, Dan, like that would be tough, but I think you could, go, I could turn to examples. Like I'm going to give you one now as to why I'm not a hundred percent sold on the quarterbacks. Like I love the 49ers model and I'm not saying you can do it like with a Brock Purdy, but it's almost like they built a great team and the quarterback's a part of it. Like, I think that's what I would focus on versus, and I know I'm saying, if you don't have a quarterback, you don't have a chance, but they need a lot right and that's mm-hmm. obviously a key piece so it gets a little complex and there's a lot of layers to it but mike i i have a problem with your basic theory that yeah craft will sit down with belichick after the season was over and yeah. say you know what do you want to do here i think the tenor of the season will be okay bill we we want to move on i think that you just went two and ten with a team that you basically created and if Robert Kraft walks into that room and says, okay, Bill, what do you want to do? Yeah. I, I think he's making a mistake. It's clear that a change has to be made. If I'm Robert Kraft, I go in and sit with Belichick and say, okay, neither of us want to lose face here. Let's figure out the best way for a mutual separation and we move on. Because if you give Bill Belichick free reign at another draft, yeah. if you give him free reign at signing more free agents – Look at the roster that is on this team. And I know they're they're somewhat injury depleted, mm. but at the same time, the guys that Bill has picked that are playing aren't playing well. That yeah. entire offense that was out there yesterday, all healthy enough to play, all guys that Bill Belichick handpicked. So yep. I, I, I have a problem with your fundamental assertion that Robert Kraft is going to go into that meeting room and say, Bill, what do you want to do? I think it's more like, yeah. how do we figure out a way to separate? Okay. I like, I love the pushback, John. And I would say, I'm going to rephrase what I said then. Cause I don't think he should go in and say, what do you want to do? I think the question maybe should be, is there anything we can do to salvage this? And then you got to talk it over from there because I'm not as, bullish as you are when when you say it's clear to me a change has to be made like that's the part where i look i get it and i think a lot of fans agree with you john like it's gotten tired but what bill what what would you think needs to happen for us to salvage this and let me tell you what we think needs to happen to salvage this and see if there can be any meeting of the minds there and honestly john what are the chances that that is the case i mean i would think Lower percentage, but who knows? Right. All right, Mike. So say that uh, they meet and and they can't come to an agreement. I'll, you're going to be continued to ask be asked these questions, but it, nationally, even this is a, a a huge plot. You know, it's the yeah. fall of a of an empire. I mean, it's as old as time. Uh, if, if say there there's a meeting, uh, do you think Bill Belichick still wants to coach? That's first. I do. Okay. I do. And I, I'll tell you, Fred, what I base that off of is, I mean, one, my instinct, but two, you know, I think his Michael Lombardi had said that on uh, Pat McAfee's show that he still wants to coach. And when Michael Lombardi says that he's very close to Bill Belichick, I sort of take that as gospel. 
Okay, so if he does want to coach, uh, you know, he's under contract with the Patriots. If the Patriots don't fire him and there was to be a, a trade situation, do you think that's something other teams in the NFL would be interested in doing? Oh, man. I, I, it's so, I was trying to measure this out, Fred. It's so hard to project this. Right. I guess I put myself in the position of those teams. You have to, at least some of them have to explore it. I mean, I, I almost could compare it to Tom when he left in 2020, the idea that maybe he felt like he needed a new challenge to, you know, to keep himself energized. You know, like, I think I could, like, I could see Bill going to another team and having success. So because of that, Fred, like I would say, if I'm an owner of another team, I'm absolutely exploring that possibility. Yeah. And I could see it, Mike too. And Fred, I I could see him going to a meeting with an owner. And you know how the, you guys know how the owners are and just kind of sitting there and having that one-on-one conversation. I think an owner could become enamored with the thought of a guy that's won six Super Bowls and been to how many, uh, it can come in and, and uh, listen, this is what we just need to do. I look at your personnel. We need to do this, 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 this we need to coach them up. And I think that this team can go in the right direction. It's just funny when you go, you know how owners are. I'm hearing that like every day now, like when we talk about the future of Bill Belichick, well, you know how owners are. And it's like, you know, the, basically what you're saying is, you know, they're idiots. And like, the thing is that these are like billionaire, like kings of industry, yeah. but they're always positioned to me whenever I ask about Belichick. <laughs> you're not the only one, like literally everyone's like, right. well, you know, <clears throat> you know, the t- whatever tap or whatever in Carolina is like a jackass. Like, you know, he's a, a, f- a hedge fund guy who's a, the biggest ego in the world and da, 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 da. You're right. But it's, in it's always sport. presented. It's right. like, yeah, but it's just funny to me. Like these guys that are all. You know, billionaires like the, the the highest percentage of people in the world are are you are being presented to me as being idiots, but uh, I guess that's the case. Yes, Mike, you Fred, were saying something. Yeah, I was just gonna say, guys. I think the other part of the discussion to me is just how hard these this job is. Yeah. Like, there's a reason. There's a reason you get five, seven, whatever jobs every year turning over. And like John, I love the. I think this discussion is totally fair, and I bet if we took a straw poll of the listeners, more would agree with you than me. Like I think a lot of people feel like it's reached its end point. I look at it like there's so few people that you can look at and say, "Oh, they they can do this job." Like there's proven results, and I think Bill falls in that category, and that's why I'm a little more um, hesitant in this area. You you don't think that the game has passed Bill by? He, he's building his team to run the football. Everyone else, look at Miami, for example. Everyone else uses a lot of motion, getting a lot of speed from the perimeter players. Bill has decided to go the opposite direction. You don't think the game has passed him by at all? John, I strongly feel the game has not passed him by. I I strongly feel that if the Patriots had um, a, a, a slightly more functional offense, like we might not even be having this discussion. I think so. Yeah, it's it's a good difference of opinion. I I like it. Well, Mike, follow that up with just a quick thought on on craft, right? If that's what it comes down to, it doesn't come down to John or yourself or me or Fred and, and the fans. It comes down to when he sits down with Robert. You know, you put yourself in Robert's shoes, a guy that we've all been around for the last twenty five years, was a fan sitting on those. Benches, you know, the the bleachers in Foxborough Stadium, the old place, and what they've built and where they are and what they've done. Combine that with the fact that what's happened since Brady left and and what happened this year in Germany and what have you. Where do you think Robert's going to sit if this continues with the historically bad offense we've seen as they have that meeting? Dan, it's so it's so hard to know. I mean, I the personal dynamic there and. Because Robert's I, I fiercely gotta, loyal to his businessmen. I, he, loyalty is one of the most important things to him. And at the same time, you know, the results you got to produce, right? And it hasn't happened. And so I always go back to what he says on the big decisions. He says, measure nine times and cut once. And I do think he would not be human if there wasn't a part of him that thought, like maybe this, maybe we've reached like the end, you know, like it's just run its course. And that would be a normal human thought from him. But I think what would hold him back is the idea of what I'm talking about with John is he, he knows like the greatness of Bill and the idea of him going somewhere else and having success 
like is is a, in my view and and I'm going to assume in his view is probably a strong likelihood 